Hey everybody, this is Captain Kimo, and in this tutorial, I am going to cover exposure fusion in Photomatix Pro. And this is the exposure that we're going to be using. We're going to be using two exposures to create our HDR image. This is uh, the underexposed image, and I have the overexposed image. So we're going to take those two exposures to create this image using exposure fusion in Photomatix, and then we're going to post-processed image using Photoshop and Lightroom to create this photo. Let's get started. I have my Photomatix Pro window open. I'm going to go drag and drop the two exposures that we're going to use. I'm going to drag and drop it right into the Photomatix window and we're going to go ahead and click OK and then just go ahead and click an OK again. We're going to leave everything as is and just go ahead and go straight through to the tone mapping window. We are now in our tone mapping window. So we have enhancer default selected, but we're going to use fusion, so we're going to go straight into the fusion preset and we're going to select fusion adjusted. Now I like fusion adjusted compared to these other ones because of the uh, slider options available. So we're going to start from fusion adjusted. I'm going to go ahead and close this window out and make this a little bigger. So let's begin tone mapping this image. The first slider we have is accentuation and this really makes the image brighter or darker and I'm going to want it darker and we do this by bringing it to the left here. So I think I'm going to make it just a tad bit darker and we're going to leave it right about there and then move on to the next uh, slider here which is blending point and this slider pretty much does the same thing I'm gonna wanna bring it up just about a notch here just to lighten it up a tad next we'll move down to our shadow slider what our shadows slider does is it makes the shadow either darker or lighter so I'll play around with it just to see if I like it darker or lighter and I'm going to say that I I like it a little brighter so we're gonna we're just gonna leave it at 10 so now let's move to the next slider which is sharpness and this is my favorite slider out of um, all the options in uh, exposure fusion and this is this makes your image sharper which uh, when it comes to HDR images they tend to be a little blurry a little out of focus a little dreamy and this really just gives the image a crisp look so let's play around with the uh, sharpness slider here I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it down to the left just so you can see how it works uh, you can see it loses a little clarity and if we were to bring it all the way back you can see the difference here and let's see if I like it all the way to 10 now that's that's a little too much so I'm gonna bring it down to right around right around 8 so 8 looks good I'm, I'm gonna leave it right there okay so our next slider is color saturation now color saturation for exposure fusion is a little weak um, detail enhancer produces better color but with exposure fusion it tries to keep the photo more natural so y you don't get that extra color pop that you would in detail enhancer so let's go ahead and play around with the color saturation slider uh, let's see if we like it less saturated or more saturated and I'm liking it more saturated so we're gonna bring it up just a little bit uh, about six looks good next we're gonna go to white clipping slider now I already know I'm gonna bring this slider down because what this does is this brings up uh, the brightness of your uh, white white areas and what, why I'm bringing it down is because of this area here it's a little blown out so I want to kinda bring it all the way down so I'm just gonna bring it down to a zero and the next slider is black clip um, what this does is really plays around with your shadows it makes it darker or or lighter darker would be going to the right here or lighter now if you want it um, darker you'll add more contrast uh, and which actually looks pretty good but let me see I'm trying to kind of make a judgment which one I like better and I I'm gearing more towards a lighter black point so I'm gonna play around with it and yeah I'm gonna probably go back to right around let's do a three okay so our last slider for exposure fusion is midtone um, midtone will make your image darker or brighter again so I like to just play around with this and see what it gives me and then I'll uh, 
make a decision whether or not I like it brighter or darker and I believe it started from about a 2 so we'll go back there and I, I'm, I'm liking it darker so I'm gonna bring it to to a 0 let's see or maybe a 1 alright so we're gonna spring it right to about 1 and we'll leave it right there so now we're done with um, that's pretty much it we're, we're done with all the, uh, the settings and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit process alright so now that our image is processed I'm gonna go ahead and just save as I'm gonna save right into the folder that the exposure was dragged from and then I'm gonna do something uh, something a little advanced here I am going to go and undo this undo this uh, tone mapping and this takes us right back to the uh, the the three or the two exposures before it was processed now I'm gonna hit tone mapping again and it's gonna take us right back right back to the uh, the same window basically this is, th this is the same photo we just tone map only now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with my settings again and I'm gonna bring this area here of the photo I'm gonna make it darker I'm just focusing on this area right here so we're gonna play around with it now I, I could probably do this in Photoshop but you'll uh, you won't get the shadow detail here so I'm gonna do it here in Photomatics and then we're gonna take the two exposures we're gonna blend them in Photoshop and I'll show you that once uh, we get there so let me go ahead and play around with it until I like it kinda of where I think it'll work for the photo okay this should work so let's go ahead and process it so now that we have this image processed, I'm gonna save this also same directory and I'm just gonna throw a two behind it so now we have two exposures we're gonna use or two two HDR images that we're gonna use to combine together in Photoshop and let's go ahead and go into Photoshop alright so I have Photoshop elements open and I have the two HDR photos that we saved from Photomatics open as well and then this is the the nice and nicely lit uh, first image that we did or we tone mapped and this is the one that we did that's a little darker where I'm gonna use this area here and blend it with the uh, the nicer photo so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna select all and then copy it and then we're gonna go into our uh, good image here good HDR image and I'm gonna paste it right on top of that photo and you can see here the, it created a new layer so if I were to click the eyeball off it would uh, show you the original photo so I'm going to click it back on and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask and it adds a layer mask here and then we're going to invert that layer mask I'm going to click control I to invert it and on a Mac it's command I and then we're going to use the uh, the paintbrush tool right here make sure you have it on white set your opacity I would say 50 percent would be good normally I use about 20 percent for a uh, smoother transition and before we start painting in the mask area I'm gonna increase my brush size a little bit alright about I'm gonna just go type in 400 and that looks good and then make sure you have the uh, the layer mask selected and then just start painting in the white areas right here and just right around the building and and where the light area is this is why I kinda want it a little darker because it's, it's just a little too bright just a little lightly go over the pier a little bit too I'm gonna switch my color to black and just and just paint in areas that I might have went a little too far on so far that looks good now let's let's go ahead and check it out and see how it looks this is uh, 
this is the after here, so we're gonna go back to just original. See, so it kind of darkens our photo a little bit. It looks a little better. Oh, let me go right into here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with the uh, opacity here just to blend it in a tad bit or a little better. And I think I like it right. Seventy-five percent looks good. All right, so that looks good. So next, what I'm going to do is I am going to hit the Command or Control Shift Alt E button. Mac, it's Command Shift Alt E, and I'm just going to make sure you have this top layer selected and click and hit the button, and it'll create a composite layer, which will bring basically flatten all the layers that you have and bring a composite layer on top here. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to go into the quick mode here. And then I am going to let me close this out, and I'm going to bring up the shadow a little bit. This is what I'm doing here is I'm 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 working for the foreground here. I'm going to use this foreground, and I'm going to mask it back into the original image. So let's go back. So that looks good. Now I'm going to go back to the full mode, and you can see it's a little it's a little better lit in the foreground. And then what I'm going to do is add another layer mask, and then I'm going to use my gradient tool make sure it's set foreground color here right here hit OK and now I'll select the foreground color here and then I'm going to just create a little gradient uh, that's a it's creating a radial gradient we don't want that we want a, a linear a linear gradient so let's do that again And then if we were to click the eyeball, you can see the uh, before and after kind of brings out the foreground just a little bit, which is exactly what I was looking for. All right, so so now we're going to do the uh, Control-Shift-Alt-E again, or Command-Shift-Alt-E on Mac, and create another composite layer on top. And this is where I start to just clean up the image. And what we're going to use to remove the lens flare here and the little spots here is the uh, the spot healing brush tool. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to go zoom right in on top of it. And then I'm just going to make my, my brush a little smaller. I'm just going to click right on top of there and you notice it's, it's not perfect. So I'm just going to keep clicking around there until, until it looks, looks more natural. I'm going to come out and that looks good and then I'm going to zoom in right here and I'm going to just hit that with the uh, spot healing tool and there you have it and I'm going to come on out and this is what it looks like okay so that was before now this is after and that, that's that's it for uh, Photoshop we'll go ahead and go into Lightroom now and uh, do the final post processing over there Okay, so I am in Lightroom and I am in the uh, develop module and the first thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to go ahead and crop a, a little bit. So let's go to our little crop tool here. Crop it and straighten out the horizon. And that looks good. And I'm going to adjust the color temperature. And I'll go down and play around with the exposure. But before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down to the uh, the effects here, and I'm going to play with the uh, the vignette a little bit just to kind of draw the eye into the image a little. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to go back up to uh, exposure and play around with it a tad bit. Okay, so the recovery light I'm probably gonna want to bring up just to reduce reduce that brightness here. And fill light I'm probably gonna bring that up just a hair. That looks good. I'm probably not gonna want to add any black, but we'll see. Okay, just maybe just a little bit. Hmm. Okay, let's. Play with brightness. I think I'm gonna bring it up just a notch. Contrast. I'm probably gonna want it up probably a notch, a little bit. And then clarity. We're gonna add a little more clarity here to it, 
just to give it that extra that extra sharpness in the image vibrance I'm not sure if this needs any more vibrance but we'll bring it up and see what happens all right and then we'll go into the tone curve and just play around with some of the settings in there alright so so I'm not gonna go into doing anything else down here but I think it looks good so far as is except for I'm probably gonna wanna bring the sky down or darken it up a tad bit here and maybe soften up the uh, the clouds over here so I'm gonna just drag the gradient tool here and then I'm gonna bring down my exposure a little bit and you know what I'll, I'll probably give it a little bit of a yellow tint to it and then dial down the clarity okay let's go ahead and hit done there and let's check it out let's do the before and after this is before and then this is after Lightroom adjustments alright so I like that but uh, before we finish out I'm just gonna go back into the basics and just play around with it a little bit more and just play around with the sliders just a tad you know just to fine-tune the image And I think I think that's it. Let's go check it out. Let's do the uh, before and after here. All right. So here is our underexposure. Here is our overexposure, and we use those two exposures, merge them in the photomatics to create this HDR image using Exposure Fusion, and then we created the final image using Photoshop and Lightroom, and this is our final result. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to sign up to my YouTube channel, and don't forget to visit CaptainChemo.com. Until next time, this is Captain Chemo, signing out.